Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Chenovsky here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Mad Viking Games. First off, I want to say I'm not a financial advisor. If you are investing, it's your decision, it's your choice, so do your own research. Next, if you do like this content, please hit that subscribe and like button. It really does help. Last, I want to say thank you so much to this community, Mad Viking Games community especially, VFAM, everyone out there. Thank you so much for your support. It really doesn't go unnoticed. But without further ado, let's dive into this video. So today, what I'm going to be talking about is the potential amount of NFTs that Mad Viking Games will need to create. Now, this is all speculation, but what I'm going to be using is data about how many players are playing currently for different types of games. To get a better understanding of how many players play certain types of games in traditional gaming. And if we're trying to reach that market, we're going to need these type of numbers, okay? So first, let's talk about the Gen 1 characters, and then we'll talk about later what we potentially might need. Now, these Gen 1 characters and these mintings, I think, can be more exclusive. But the other uh, Gen characters, the second and third ones, I think we're going to need larger numbers for ease of access into the game now the gen 1 characters again i said could be exclusive because they are going to give us the access to alpha and beta now traditional gamers are used to only having limited access to betas and alpha so jumping in and buying these would be no problem as long as it's not a high number or a hard barrier to purchase okay so i think when we start and we have the marketplace open and we have these Gen 1s ready for purchase, I believe we're going to probably range anywhere from 7,500 to 10,000. Now, the reason why I believe that is because when you look at the, di the chests from earlier, we have um, these chess holders from the ICO date that are going to be allowed to be whitelisted into purchasing so these chest holders are going to have the ability to purchase before everyone else can so we have 543 chests that got out on the ico date and we don't know yet from mad viking games how many they're going to be able to get now if they get two each they're allowed 1886 now we have a couple thousand people that are in the Discord. We have a couple thousand people who are probably out on Twitter and in other spaces just watching Mad Viking Games waiting to purchase. So if we're sitting at just already, if two buy at 1,086, well, we're going to now need to start thinking about these other people. Now, if we just do it based off the Discord and everyone gets another times two, well, we're going to be sitting there, let's just say, plus 02264 times 2. We're going to be sitting at another 4,528. So we're going to just sit there at the bare minimum for Discord and the package holders to get ourselves close to 5,000. Now, do we want to stop at just the amount of Discord numbers? Do we want to stop at just the amount of people for chess? No, we want to allow people that hear about it and like, oh, snap, Mad Viking Games, holy crap, they have this alpha and beta potential. I want to join. So we're going to need to still leave some room for people to join. And they say they have some big news and partnerships that are going to that they're very proud of that they're excited to release when they're able to. Right. So if it is a huge partner. I think we're going to need a little bit more than 5,000. I think we want to have people to be able to rush in and try and get their last minute hands on that alpha and beta so they can feel like they joined in early, right? So I'm thinking 10,000 seems like a good number just in my opinion. Now, some people might think it's a little too much. I mean, I heard someone in the Discord say 500, but I don't even think they realized that that was actually <laughs> how much we have in the chest holders right so i think if we are really going to look at this realistically we have to say 
in my opinion, we need about 10,000, right? I could see it going anywhere from 7,500 to 10,000 and being a little more exclusive. That would make sense to me. But I think we got to have a little bit of wiggle room for when this game starts to explode and people really understand, right? Um, I honestly wouldn't be mad about 7,500. I'm just trying to think if we end up hitting the mass adoption part that we're hoping for and the partners are big, I want people to feel like they have a chance of getting in. And if we look at numbers later, like I'm going to show you, there's a lot of people, if they're interested in joining these things, that will join in and um, it, it could be very beneficial to have a little bit more. And even to think about it, the NFT characters being sold is profits. So if you're a stakeholder, it's uh, profits that are going to be given back to you from the staking reward program. So you could also think about it like that, right? So more characters, better off for stakeholders as well. Uh, but anyways, besides that. So Gen 1 characters, I'm thinking around 7,500 to 10,000 just because we can afford to be exclusive during that time because there's talking about having alpha and beta access to the game. So, but what about after that, right? Well, we need we know that there's going to be breeding in the game, so the alpha characters will be able to breed with each other or the gen 1 characters will be able to pre breed with each other, and so you'll be able to create gen 2 characters that could be sold on the marketplace. But I don't necessarily think that's going to be enough to be able to get mass adoption by quarter three, right? If we're going to be hitting esports and we're going to be doing that that type of large of a community, we need to be able to have ease of access to play. If we don't have that, traditional gamers are just going to give up, walk away. And if it's esports, they want it to be on a mass market because you need to have it be watchable. You need to have people be engaged in it and you want a lot of people in it engaged in it to make it worthwhile so you need a lot of room for people to play now i don't know if there's another mechanism for playability there could be that we're unaware of and the alpha and beta playing is just for gen ones but if we're going to have these gen 2 characters that are going to be minted for playing we really have to start looking at other games and seeing how many players play right if the first game goes really well and we're sitting at our MMO opening next year and people are hyped about Mad Viking games and even if and the let's just say the beta goes really well and we're for the first game, right? And everything's going smoothly. Well, we have to start looking at numbers of games that are performing well. Well, let's just talk about one that it performs well but it's not that like high on on the, the high scales of players, right? So let's just talk about Black Desert Online. Well, playing right now, there's 14,000 people. Uh, the peak of the 24th hours was about 17,000. And all-time peak was 60,000 players. Now, Black Desert All Online isn't the most hype game, but a lot of people play it, like it. And it's kind of a pay-to-play and win game. So there's a lot of people who play these types of games and they will be really trying to jump in to NFTs once they see the potential of graphics and playability that we're hoping from Mad Viking games. So if we have this amount of players playing all the time, we got to think that we need enough to cover just this low end game. So if we're talking low end game, then we might need 20,000 for the, the Gen 2 then another 20,000 or 30,000 for Gen 3. And hopefully with breeding, we hit those large numbers. But that's on the low end. What if we end up doing well and being successful? And we're, we're getting into the medium range, okay? So what if we talk about medium range like Final Fantasy, right? So if we're talking Final Fantasy, then we're going to have numbers in like the 30,000s playing right now. And in the 24 hours, they're going to be talking about the 30, 32,500, right? Or 33,000. And let's talk about in the two months, they had 95,000 players playing in their peak. 
So if we get this little mid-range game, right? Not even mid-range. This is very popular. A lot of people play this game. We had, at the all-time peak, 100,000 players. Now, Final Fantasy, they play um, all different types of characters. They don't just stick to one. And honestly, this database only talks about it from the Steam end. And there's other ways to get into this game. And that goes with the other one, too. So there could be more than this playing. So if we're going to have 30,000 people playing at all times and they want to play different characters, well, we're going to need more than twenty to 30,000 minted for each generation. We're going to need like 50,000 plus minted for each generation to go with breeding, right? So we're going to be sitting at some high numbers of character creations if this thing takes off, right? If they go, if, if they go really big, and they have a lot of hype, and it's coming up even off that east. Like, let's say the esports announcement at the Europe convention, right, is taken really well, and people can't wait to play. And the game finally comes out, and there's a hype train. People on Twitch are talking about it. Everything's going on. Well, let's just talk about the game that that is right now, which is Lost Ark. Well, Lost Ark is sitting at 1.2 million players right now. And in the past 24 hours, they peaked at 1.3 million. And the past, it, it, so we're sitting there right now looking at crazy numbers of millions of players for the hyped game, right? If Mad Get Back in Games comes through and we're expecting these numbers and we get lucky that way, Right? If this is tr our dreams come true, then we need to make sure that we have the NFTs and the capacity to handle that. So we're going to be needing millions of these NFTs to be created. Right. So if we talk about the NFT creation for later times, we're going to need enough to fill the, the void for traditional gamers to play and play freely. OK, so maybe in my mind, there might be a way to do a different mechanism for players to actually play. And maybe these Gen 1 characters can be really unique. This is just my, my idea that they could be like a skin covering a type of warrior or a mage or a, a whatever's out there for classes, right? Hunters. I don't know. I'm just talking about the traditional type of styles and like, wow, right? What if they just become like a skin, a covering that you're the only one that has that gives special things to it in the MMORPG or in the turn-based game? So that way the Gen 1 characters are even more unique and they give you access only to the alpha and beta and the breeding even becomes more unique, right? So just to, just to kind of throw out an idea, but anyways, we're really talking about nfts in this video and how many would potentially be needed if we go full mainstream and we really hit that traditional gaming market well so if we're if we're at that peak performance again we're going to need millions of nfts and if we get to that like medium range or average range of final fantasy we're going to need hundreds of thousands in general and even if we're on the low end for black desert we're going to need they just their peak was still 60,000 so we're going to need like hundreds of thousands for it right so i personally believe that we're going to be seeing a lot of these nfts created if that is the access to the game and there's going to be way more out there than we believe okay so th if that's the way it's going to work um the only other thing i would say is if there was another mechanism for creating characters but we just don't know that yet. We haven't been told that yet. So um, so that's my thoughts on how many we're going to potentially need if we hit different scenarios of engagement. Okay. Now, I again, I'm going to say I don't think we need the, a, a massive amount of NFTs on the Gen 1 characters. I think we could still go very limited on that and get anywhere to, from the 7,500 to 10,000 because they talk about that as alpha and beta and I think that's going to be making them even more unique and special if we do that um, because if we do hit those millions of people 
then having 10,000 at a unique look or a unique spec is going to be uh, going to be awesome. Uh, but that's enough uh, being said about that. Um, I would love your thoughts on this. Um, I know it's a, I'm, I'm talking Moon Boy a little bit when we talk about millions of people playing. Um, that's why I really wanted to kind of look at other games and see that. Um, I do really want to hear your opinions in the comment section on it. I'm wondering what you think Mad Viking Games might do. Do you think they're going to do NFTs? Do you think they're going to do another mechanism or things like that to make characters? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm fascinated to find out myself. Um, so hope you found this all interesting and helpful. Uh, again, this is all speculation. If you did like this content, please hit that subscribe and like button. It does help. And if you do want to enter into my Mad Viking Games giveaway of 242,000 MVG, you have to make sure you're a follower on my Twitter and you subscribe to this channel. And it will happen when I reach 1,000 subscribers. I hope you guys have a great night, week, and day. Until next time.